So we acknowledge what's happened in the past and we make a plan of how to move forward into getting that life that you want. I'm gonna tell you about a woman whose heart is sunshine, whose body burned hot. I'm gonna tell you about a woman whose cold is tundra with some frozen eyes. I can tell by the way she moves that she can't. Welcome to the CNO Show, gentlemen, <laughs> brought to you by Great Man Move Mountains. It's 11.02 here Friday, July 24, 2020. We don't have Patrick from New Zealand on for the first time. I hope he's okay. Now watch, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to start the show before he gets here just so I can give him shit later. But I hope he's okay. Patrick, we love you. It's 5 a.m. there, and he's gotten on, he's been on our show every single day for the, what, 14, 14, 14 weeks. weeks? Yeah. So 14 times five, I got to do math. I'll let her do the math. I think this is the 70th, 70th, 70th show. show. And Patrick's missing our 70th show. Everyone's going to give him a hard time for that when he comes on. But no, you guys are here to hear Ruben grunt in his car. No, I just muted him. You guys, <laughs> you guys are here because this is a tribe of men that believe what you believe. You believe that you source your happiness from within yourself. Even though you're going through potentially a shit show with your relationship, Maybe she said she wants divorce or space or I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Or she's going out till 3 a.m. with her girlfriends like happened to me before I, you know, heard the divorce uh, talk back in 2015. I've been through this. Cynthia's been through a lot of relationship stuff in our past, right? And we're both professionals in this field. And so we share some of our shit. We're coaches. We're not therapists. We're coaches. So we acknowledge what's happened in the past and we make a plan of how to move forward into getting that life that you want how to learn the three forms of confidence that we talk about in the show, behavioral, emotional, and spiritual, and how to get that life that you want. we got chats coming in. Yeah, yeah Patrick stopped at number 69. Well played. <laughs> well played, Patrick. He's busy, busy on 69. Yeah, you are here to learn the forms of confidence and how to be that man, what to do, and why you are doing it. We're professional coaches. Myself, Jeff Allen, Miss Cynthia Cruz is the only woman allowed in the show to give us her real gut level feminine points of view and feedback for men and to tell us how it is from a woman's point of view welcome Cynthia. oh thank you for having me and happy friday to all of you i am so excited to know where everyone's headed in their car on this friday afternoon <laughs> vacation <laughs> i know so it's so good to see you and thank you for having me yeah fantastic thanks for being here uh, our theme of this week is chicks dig scars and you are a man who's rising in the world we love that you're here regardless of where you are in the world new zealand spain the uk or all around the united states love that you're here gentlemen you are a man starting to rise in this world we have a featured man that's going to be on today he's fashionably late right now we'll see if he shows up and like always we have some comedy and a post from the forum to start us off this one got eight responses before i could even read the thread like we have a vibrant, phenomenal, supportive forum of tribe of men and guys that'll call you out on your shit if, uh, you know, if that's what you're asking for. If you want to post out there, that's what we're here for. And Cynthia and I are here on this show to call you out on your stuff and point your shoulders in the right direction if that's what you're wanting, right? Love you guys are here. Here we do our daily work as men. You come here for renewal of thought and belief. That's why you are here every single day if you can be, right? So our theme of this week is Chicks Dig Scars. So our question of today I'll ask here in a moment after our comedy is going to be, what am I proud of right this moment? Let's start with our post from the forum, Cynthia. This man says, my wife is on a trip with her sister and I'm in the process of moving out of my apartment and moving my stuff while she's out of town. So they live together in an apartment right now and he's moving out. To clarify, I'm still living with her for one or two more weeks. She's not mentioned anything about reconciling, as I said on the Sino show recently. Yesterday, we were on the phone, and I'm going away this week with some friends who I haven't seen in a while. I told her about the trip and that I was headed away this weekend, so I won't see her when I get back. She asked why I didn't tell her sooner that I was going on this trip. I said it was not set in stone yet that we were going, so I didn't think I should tell her yet. It has only been confirmed as of Monday that we are definitely going. So only a few days ago, only a couple days ago, that we're definitely going. She called me back and said that she tells me when she's going away with notice. And I was lying to her, but not telling her I was going away. By not telling her I was going away, and that I always lie about this sort of thing, since I don't give enough notice. Then she said that since I was lying about the trip, 
that she actually wanted to come home from the trip and talk about us reconciling. But now, since I lied about going on this trip with friends and didn't tell her soon enough that this is all out the window and we're completely done now. <laughs> I'm I'm pushing I'm gonna come back. I push it into this a little bit because you can just feel Cynthia and I were talking about this before the show and you can just feel the fucking power tug of war that's happening. You know, it's almost like she's grabbing it by the shirt and just like <laughs> at least that's what I can feel. So let me ask you right now. Cynthia's got she's like, well no, I don't believe that as well, Jeff. I think you're being a little inflammatory. <laughs> I don't I... <laughs> Just listening intently to what you were saying. <laughs> oh, oh, I love giving you a hard time. So no, uh, <laughs> you made a great point this morning about where she might be coming from. And I'd love for you to jump in and share that. And then we'll go ahead and you know, continue with the show and jump into some comedy. But what was your thoughts? He's going away on this trip with friends. She's saying that you know he's lying and that he hasn't shared with her you know, in the past of when he's gone on trips and things like this. And now it's completely done. That's kind of four different things there. So let's let's break it up. Why do you think that she's maybe so affected by this? Regardless of the whole teasing, I was going to talk about reconciliation and now I'm not, and now we're totally done. That's a bit of a different subject, right, that we can pause on. But what do you think is so sensitive to her about the situation with him? Well, I, I think there is that, you know, she felt the man – you know, that she says she didn't want to be with anymore, move on and be moving toward a different kind of life and a fun kind of energy. And that kind of did a like, oh, wait a minute, I'm losing this, this push pull energy. And, and it kind of felt like out of her control and she wanted to gain control back. And I feel like that's what she was trying to do to feel like she could have some of that energy back again. And then to say, well, God, if you had just, since you didn't do this, never mind. I was going to give you a chance, but never mind. Um, that just, that just floored me. Um, <laughs> you should lead into that. Cause you said it more emphatically this morning. Yeah. Well, if it, I've actually had that, I had a, a man say that to me before. And if that was a man saying to me, you know, I was going to be with you, but because you did this, never mind. I'd just be like, All right, sc screw you. I'm out of here. Um, that is so totally unfair. And um, yeah, and, I, and I've actually had that happen to me when, and that, when that gentleman was like, well, I was going to be with you, but because you did this, this, and this today, I decided that I'm not going to be with you. And he was like pacing back and forth in front of me, like yelling. And it was just like, all of a sudden I was like, this has nothing to do with me. I want nothing to do with this. Um, that is an extremely unfair uh, position to put someone oh, in. Man. Yeah. Unfair and immature on his part. And, you know, projecting on you and blaming you and playing some kind of shame power dynamic game there so you can feel better about himself, I suppose. Yeah, true. <laughs> just not just not fun stuff. Um, and I love that man that, that men in the forum came and supported this poster who I believe is on here today. Right. If you're able to talk right now, if you don't mind, I want to say your name if you don't want to talk or if you can't talk. But if you want to come on and share a little bit about this, I'd, I'd appreciate it. Go for it. Yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah, I can come on. Um, yeah, so I, I um, so I was on the phone with her on Wednesday night. We just had a good talk. She's away with her sister, um, so she called me about something separate, and then I told her that this trip is coming. And so um, then she was, I think, kind of shocked by it too, because these are also friends that she did not uh, really like during our marriage, and now I'm going to see them again so I think she was upset by that as well that's probably part of it and so then she had to hang up the phone to think about it and then once she I think thought about it then she called back and said what I, I wrote in the post there um, about saying that I lied throughout our whole marriage and that this sort of thing is why we're getting the divorce and since I did it now, it just proves that we need to have the divorce and 
I was thinking of coming back to reconcile, but now that's completely out the window and we're completely done now. So I was thinking maybe, but now we're done for good. So. Yeah. Let me open it up. Who wants to unmute themselves and come on and give feedback to Rob? I mean, we have our opinions. We shared that. Who wants to give Rob some feedback on the situation, please. Let's see if anybody wants to open up on this Friday. If you're driving for the love of God, don't crash your car. <laughs> okay. No. All right. I think everyone. I don't know. I, I I held back on giving Rob feedback because my my initial reaction to reading what he posted was that she was just being completely completely unfair um, with this. You know, oh here's a carrot, but never mind, you already fucked it up again because you're a complete asshole and you've always been a complete asshole. So. Let's just get a divorce. So yeah, Rob, like I agreed with what everybody said, you know, it's, it sounds like that's a really difficult situation and like you're handling it the right way. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate it. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks, Tim. Yeah. The, especially what you said about, Oh, and you've always been this way. It's just this kind of generalized character assassination on top of the pulling the carrot back. It seems purposefully hurtful. Um, maybe not consciously, I suppose. Uh, I'll ask Cynthia about that in a few minutes, if that's what's purposeful or not, or whether we should even care about that, which is probably no. But yeah, Joseph, raise your hand, please. Come on in. Yeah, go yeah uh, I kind of held back, too, on, on uh, responding. Because um, I, I was really upset about that. Like, it just seemed like she was being very manipulative, just trying to control him, like keep him like in a place where he was comfortable, where she was comfortable where he was at. Um, and like, I, I agree. I kind of like holding a carrot out here. Like if, uh, if you do X, Y, and Z for me, like then maybe, you know, there's a future for us. It seemed very manipulative. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And, uh, you know, Rob, he'd even said that these were friends that she didn't like from the past as well. So I don't know if it was some passive aggressive way to try to get him to not hang out with them too, or just mm -hmm. probably a, a soup of all those things. Right. Joseph yeah 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 awesome thanks for coming on appreciate it hey jason yeah and oh good rob go ahead no sorry and uh when the call happened too i i actually had a good friend over who he he was polite and he left the room but then we talked about it right after and he said the exact same thing that you did that uh, trying to manipulate the situation and try to have passive aggressive anger underneath everything and that she probably doesn't mean what she's saying it's just whatever all the feelings inside of her were at that time are just coming out and she sees that i'm seeing friends who i haven't seen in a while that i'm going to go out and and have fun and maybe she doesn't <laughs> doesn't like it yeah yeah you had said that earlier so i want to come back to cynthia on that I, I agree with you rob totally thanks joseph yeah jason go for it so i'll just echo everybody's reactions to how that makes me feel. But, um, you know, Rob, one, one thing, if, if you get that again, that might be really useful is use this opportunity to deliver one of your nuts. Um, and I don't think I would have been, you know, on the fly smart enough to do it in that case, because that would have pissed me off too. But next time you get something like that, maybe it's, you know, I'm a man who doesn't want to be in a conditional relationship and I don't love you conditionally, um, and then just stop, right? And, and that her reaction might tell you a lot about whether she meant it or she's just trying to be nasty. Yeah, Jason, I'll, I'll add on to that. If, I think that would be great if she's wanting or trying to have some kind of conversation. I agree with you totally, right? If she's waiting for you to respond, that would be a way to ground yourself in your own values. Say, Rob, was this uh, was this just a one-way communication? Did she just kind of shoot that at you, or was this a conversation? Uh, well, she she came on, she shot it at me, and then I was kind of taken aback by it a little bit, and so I responded. I just said, okay, if, if that's how you feel, and then I don't know if I really even said anything further than that. And I said, well, I'm going on the – the trip so i'll see you when, <laughs> nice. I, when I get back and... i'm going i'm still going you know like that's cool yeah right on. I, yeah, I love that so... rob 
you know, I love what you said as well. Like, hey, if that's how you feel, Jason's point is if if you're in, let's let's say you're in a relationship where there's kids involved and you're going to be co-parents regardless, or you are wanting to reconcile, if you will, and and you're moving toward version 2.0, or that's a hope, or you're in the same house, you're going to be in the same house, which you are no no longer going to be, Rob. And it's right. a longer discussion. I love where Jason's head's at as far as grounding yourself in your own values and stating that. It's not a question. It's stating that simply with one sentence, with compassion. It, you know, hopefully you're calm first, right? With compassion. Yeah. And then just letting it be and continuing to go be with your friends. Yeah, I love that. Hey, Pat, come on in, please. You raised your hand, please. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. Rob and I actually kind of discussed this offline. Um, I, I really respect and applaud what he's doing by uh, by standing his ground and going in and being with his friends. I think that this overture by his wife is not real. It's just a power grab, and it's pretty. It's an obvious, blatant power grab. And I think to for him, if he had caved into that power grab, it would make things even worse. Uh, I think that there was really no reconciliation on the table. She just wanted to get his reaction. And I also think that if he had caved, he would have lost respect from her. You know, whatever respect he's been able to gain back over the, the, the previous months, that would have been gone because she would have known that he's got, she still got him under her control. Uh, and that's not where you want to be. That's not what we're learning. Um, so he's doing exactly the right thing and I applaud him for it. Awesome. Thanks, Pat. I appreciate it. So yeah. good. But that's phenomenal. You guys connected offline about this as well. And so let me ask, let me bounce that over to Cynthia because I had uh, said I wanted to pause on how much of this do you think? And because men think of <laughs> men think in terms of boxes, right? How much of this is manipulation and how much of this is just her firing emotions and, and we shouldn't consider it purposeful or is it just a soup of kind of all of those things at the same time, you know, or how would you, how would you talk about that? That's a really good question. Um, I would have to say, like, if if Rob feels on the other side, like, confused, and if he's, like, am I supposed to move toward her? Did she really want to reconcile? And did, like, did I do something I wasn't supposed to? I think feeling that on the other side is someone who is trying to manipulate the relationship space. And it may not be conscious it may not be her sitting down going i'm going to you know plan it out that way plan it out but i do say like women's energies they're always kind of you know where can i push where can i pull mm -hmm. and um again that loss of wow this man's going off and doing his own thing that's gonna maybe bring up her like anxiety and uh wanting to have some control in the situation. That makes sense. Also, what I'm hearing there is, so gentlemen, if, if she's really unconscious about this and it's completely just firing, that's one thing. If she's aware of the energy she's in when she's trying to manipulate, which women are different levels of consciousness, let's say, or awareness, if she knows that she's in that space and really pushing in, then then very much so I agree with Pat in that if he were to back down either, either one of those situations, but, and you, you guys all know this, that if Rob was to um, just bail on his friends or try to appease her in that moment or back away from Rob's own values or his own nuts, he would definitely lose respect in her eyes. Even if in the short term she praised him for it. Like that's where this, that's where guys can get caught up and confused is that, okay, I won't go see my friends or, Oh no, please let's talk. And she then gives him the carrot, mm -hmm. but ultimately loses respect. And ultimately he, ba he abandons his own self, mm -hmm. which will of course not lead to anything good down the road. So what is, <laughs> let me ask you, so what is it about that type of situation? Is it wanting to reward the man for giving her power in that instance? Do you think that's just a natural kind of reaction on her part? That, that actually makes a lot of sense of like, um, it feels good to have control and power in the moment. And it, there's a, um, like, Oh, I do want to like reward this, this person for allowing me to feel this way. And then it's a, like, ugh, 
feeling That's afterwards because the she ends up them being kind of the container and she feels like oh i'm leading this and then it's um there's there's no polarity and there's no spice to that and then and then all her like anxieties and things are gonna pop up as well yeah wow it'll spin off in lots of different ways Hey, Rob, fantastic. I appreciate you coming on, but that was awesome. And, and can, I, can I just say one yeah. more thing about it? So yeah. there's a small caveat to that now is that my friend totaled his car on the way up there. So the trip, after all that, the trip's actually canceled. So now I may have to um, see her sooner. And now she's probably going to come back and say that I'm lying, that the trip got canceled, that my friend totaled his car and we can't do the trip anymore. <laughs> so sure. I, how, how should I respond when I see her a lot sooner than <laughs> I was sure. hoping to? Sure. Let me just fire this one out. Okay. You're not responsible for her opinion of you. And you're, I've used this line with my now ex many times. I'm not, I'm no longer interested in your opinion of me. Okay. So if she really is laying into you, the first thing I would, the first thing I say is just go with what's honest. There's no reason for you to not say what's honest or by the way, go make yourself busy. Like go do something else yourself. Go fill that yeah. time with something else anyway. But you might, I mean, honestly, you might just say like, Hey, my friend totaled his car. I'll be around, but I have other plans. Like I might see you because my friend totaled his car and just be honest and go make other plans right. for yourself. And if she accuses you of something, it like, let me actually share. That's a good segue. I have a, I have a quote from Marcus Aurelius, and I want to share that right now. I was going to share it later in the show. So here's a, here's a quote just to go toward this exact thing. Marcus Aurelius in meditation says, we have the power to hold no opinion about a thing and to not let it upset our state of mind for things have no natural power to shape our judgments. So the thing here might be her opinion of us. And that has no natural power to shape our judgments of our own selves. And so she can feel however she wants to feel. You know you're being honest. You know the kind of man that you are. You don't need to stand there and take any more character assassinations. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm you, I would just text her what happened and then go make yourself busy otherwise. That's what I would do personally. Yeah, that's what I plan to do. Go on a hike or do something else for myself. Good. Good for you. Day. Yeah, phenomenal. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for jumping on. I appreciate it. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah. So our man that we're going to highlight today is on today, but we uh, have the, our comedy to show first. So let's jump over to some comedy. This clip is called Stressigans, the restaurant for stress. Hey, buddy. You're working too hard. You should take a break. I don't know, man. Come on. Are you hungry? No. Perfect. We're going to Stressigans. Stressigans? Welcome to Stressigans, the first all stress eating restaurant. All right, what can I get you guys? Oh, fucking whatever. Okay, great. I'll have the same. All right. Oh, any of this will do. At Stressigans, we know that your world is spinning out of control and you just need to satisfy a basic animal Whoa. need to make things feel right for a fleeting instant. So come get your piggy little hands on our new special. Just a fistful of dry cereal shoved into your mouth. Parmesan cheese on an old tortilla. Something crunchy. You know, to uh, balance out the soft tortilla. Something uh, sweet to balance out the saltiness. Then something salty to balance out all that sweet. Then something sweet. Now that's an immediate hit of dopamine. It's the kind of momentary distraction my mom used to make. How you guys doing? I'm going to be you honest know, with I've been you. Better. I'm kind of it's falling like, apart a little like bit. Really my head is just in a million places like, this is kind of helpful. I don't even know what I'm doing. Great. Hey, uh, do you mind if I join you? Get in here. This shit has been crazy. <laughs> hey, should we get more? Maybe just one more thing. You said that five orders ago. <laughs> <laughs> And Stressigans is the only restaurant that straight up invites you into the kitchen to just eat whatever the fuck you can find. Stare vacantly into our fridge to see if you can find the thing that will finally fill that empty part inside you. Hint, jalapeno poppers won't do it. <laughs> but you'll eat them anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. 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 
And don't forget to try our happy hour special. Just one beer to loosen me up. Shot of some weird liqueur from Albania or some shit. And fuck it, another beer. So come on down to Stress Against and mindlessly shovel food into your gaping maw. You'll regret you ever did. Stress Against. Eat Actually, your. Why did you get like milk? Just a, a oh, big, cre- something big creamy. Milk. Something oh, that has that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We got that. that. Yeah. Ah, uh, stress again. Just a fistful of dry cereal. <laughs> Any fucking thing will do. Come stare vacantly into our refrigerator and fill that hole inside of you. <laughs> oh my goodness, so good, so good. Yeah, that channel, College Humor, has been around for what twelve years now. I discovered it has so many different clips. Man, I loved getting in there and finding some stuff for you guys. So funny, so good. Oh my goodness. So yeah, our gentleman that we're going to highlight today is here. He was nice and fashionably late. Just giving you shit. Just giving you shit. And our theme of this week, I love this picture of the line with the scar across his nose, is that chicks dig scars. So gentlemen, right now, I want you to post in the chat this question for today. What am I proud of right in this moment? What am I proud of right in this moment? So if you're not driving, guys that are driving, like everybody was damn driving earlier. If you're not driving to some gorgeous beach right now on vacation, first of all, fuck you. No, just joking. <laughs> just joking. <laughs> just joking. What am I proud of right in this moment? So type into the chat, what am I proud of? Maybe I'm not stress eating right now. I'm, <laughs> I'm not shoving like just whatever the fuck into my face. <laughs> so quick story. When I was in, uh, I went to Europe after college and I couldn't find peanut butter anywhere in Europe and I was stressed being away from home and I'm like, was kind of homesick. We were there for a month with a, a class. So it wasn't just go be in Europe. It was, we were doing class work and things. And uh, I was alone in the room in my own little little place, which, which you'd think would be amazing. But I was so homesick and we did school work and shit over there. It wasn't really what I thought it was going to be. And I found a little jar of peanut butter in Paris. And there I didn't find peanut butter anywhere else in Europe. It was always um, Nutella. And I found this little jar of peanut butter and I bought a whole loaf of bread. And for the next like three hours, ate the entire fucking jar of peanut butter, <laughs> hit the entire jar while I was watching some old rerun of something in, in French on, on the tiny little television in my hostel room or whatever. <laughs> so that, that just popped to my mind of uh, stress eating some, uh, I gotta love peanut butter. Love peanut what butter. else have you done with peanut butter? That's for another show. <laughs> All right, on with our show for today. That's a good question. So Ruben says he's uh, proud of his growth and understanding of his inner fears. I love that. And yeah, please, if you'd honor our chat, Cynthia, I'd appreciate it. Jason said, uh, proud that I've stepped up to provide 24-7 care for our three kids. Wow. Um, While my wife is living in an apartment. And even says how nice it is to de-stress and relax. And proud I've been... um, have been baited into addressing this or haven't been baited into addressing this because I can't control her actions. That's yeah. amazing. Proud of not being baited in is a huge thing. Yeah. Love it. yeah. Um, Ruben shared that you're a freak. That's good to oh. know. <laughs> Thanks, Ruben. Yeah, buddy. I can undo my shirt more if you want, like <laughs> we talked about before the show. And Clayton, thank you so much for being here. Um, so making myself a focus, not sacrificing for those I love, but be strong internally for them instead and pat said proud that i'm uh drinking liquor from albania or some shit also proud that i took care of my mom for a time so pat's living in high class uh high class today um john said i'm proud of going forward with vacation even if it's the first i've done without the whole family wow that's amazing nice and rob said um Thanks, everyone, for the great feedback on my question and situation. Well, you guys are fantastic. So, yeah, our gentleman for today, Clayton, I'd love for you to come on. Thanks for being here. Let me see. Yeah, can you unmute yourself, Clayton? There we go. Yeah. yeah I got that. Is that. You hear me? Yeah, man. Good to see you. I'm, I'm actually not sure what I'm doing on. <laughs> so, no, I was uh, actually. Let you, so, let me. Yeah, let me, let me preface with. So I've known Clayton on and off through the roundtable for probably going on a year. When did you start in the roundtable, Clayton? It's probably it's almost exactly a year now. Uh, yeah. I think it was in June of 2019. I, I started uh, following and trying to grow in my own way. 
Yeah, good. Fantastic. And uh, Clayton came into, you know, our private Facebook group, Great Men Move Mountains, a few months ago. And he said, I asked him to introduce himself and share. And he said, are you sure, Jeff? Because I live a little different lifestyle. I'm like, fuck yeah, man. We're here. I, you know, I know you from the forum. I know you as an open-hearted guy. And uh, Clayton, why don't you go ahead and just say a little bit about yourself, man. And I have a feeling that a question or a scenario will pop up that you want to just put on the table Either if you have a question for us or Cynthia as a professional coach, a woman, right? Like we can just lean in here. So introduce yourself to the guys, please. Uh, I'm Clayton. Um, I, uh, like most of you, lived a monogamous life for about 18 of my adult years with one woman. Um, was I married her. I was married for about 10 years. Uh, she came to me one day and let me know that uh, – the business trip she took, she decided that she was going to spend some time with another guy who was from the UK. Um, she told me that she felt that she was polyamorous and that that was part of her identity and who she was. Um, we had been through some cheating a couple of times in the past and uh, with her first love from high school and some other things when we moved to Vancouver Island. Um, I took the route of trying to understand who she was and got into polyamory myself. I spent a full year uh, of not dating anyone while she dated and fell in love with a couple of people, but I wanted to understand it. So I joined a local community of polyamorous people of where I'm from and uh, turned out it wasn't polyamory that was more the problem and um, maintained a polyamorous lifestyle and um I, I guess i'm here most of the time because uh i didn't find the strength to be myself in my relationship and uh i uh, didn't stick up for myself and sacrificed a lot and ended up with a pile of resentment and didn't even recognize it was there until it was probably too late and it came out through uh, uh more yelling than i probably done most of my life and uh trying to figure out why and i was upset all the time yeah, man. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. 10 seconds of my story. I don't know if you know this, but uh, so my you know, ex in, in 2015 cheated and I saw the text on her phone and that was the second man that she had fallen in love with while she and I were together. The first one was in 2007. She fell in love with an old wanted to want to be boyfriend from high school, like a friend or that it was, we could have dated in high school. I don't know. And she fell in love with him remotely in 2007 and then slept with a different man in 2015 and told me she was in love with him. And, uh, you know, I still, I hadn't done this work at that time, Clayton, so I still want, didn't want her to leave, you know? And I did all the nice guy mistakes and all that shit. And even me saying that, and I feel that in you, it's like still super embarrassing, even though that's our past. <laughs> it's like in the past, and how could I have been so ungrounded and didn't know what my values were and how could I have not stood up for myself and that's what I feel from you is that fair to say yeah very much uh, I know I spent a lot of time chasing when I think if I had just stepped back and did my own thing at the time uh, things would have been better although I gotta tell you it's a bit of a blessing too I mean I've seen her move on with her life and the attention she still tries to give now and it's just not what I'm looking for anymore so um, we still have struggles with the partners I'm with, for sure. Um, but they end up being less about me, and it's about me instead. Is trying to make someone else make things about me. You turned robot. You were a robot for about three seconds, but we got most of that. So it's like less about you chasing them. It's not about chasing them. It's more about you, who you are. Allow them to make it about you. I think you said. Yeah. I mean, the one thing I did realize and the whole thing kind of blowing up in my face was that um, what I wanted and that was to be desired by somebody or not put the effort in. Um, so to be able to walk away from someone who wasn't actually interested in me, I did find I was more of a convenience and somebody was, I was useful. I am useful. I mean, I'm a carpenter. I, I built houses. Uh, I'm an I've done electrical most of my life. I uh, worked for an electrical engineering company. So when it came to getting stuff done and being able to connect was and sacrificing and saying, I'm a chameleon. I can change for you. And so I would. I would change for everybody 
that I cared about. And it came to a point where I didn't really have anything left to offer because there was nothing for me to stand on myself. And I found every time I did change for somebody, the goal would move, um, specifically with my ex-wife. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense to me. The goal would move and you lost yourself. So what's different about you? This is one of the big things I want to ask now is, so what's different? What's your frame of mind now compared to what it was in the past? So if you were talking to yourself two years ago or even a year ago, what would you say is different about you now? Uh, I think the biggest thing is the cat catastrophizing uh, things. Um, everything, because there is no solid ground to kind of stand on and I think the only thing you have any control over is you. And so if you can't control yourself, everything around you is chaos. And I think that's the biggest thing is that there were the smallest things when you feel like uh, it was the end of the world and would blow up uh, as this cycle of thought over and over again, being like, I could have done this differently. If only I'd fixed this, if only I'd given more. Whereas now it's just like, I know I have value. I know that uh, I know more about what I want. I had a chance of picking up a book called, uh, uh, I can't remember what it's called now. The, uh, What's Your Nuts? Do you know the book yeah, I'm talking hold, about? Hold on to your nuts. Hold on to your nuts. Yeah, and I went through the whole, what are my non-negotiables? That gave me a core that I was able to decide what was good for me and what was wrong for me. And um, actually, even from last summer, uh, I even said to my wife at the time, look, um, I just need my partners to like me. I don't think I need a lot, but I need my partners to like me. So if you can't like me, I need you to let me know. And she didn't answer. And she wrote me three hours later and said, I think we should sell the house. And it was devastating to have that answer, but at the same time, very freeing because it was like, well, why would I want to hold on to something that there's no value for me? I mean, it's a pretty simple request to say you want your partner to like who you are. Um, and just putting my foot down and saying, look, I have one boundary and that is that we like each other and we can't even meet that. So yeah, let's just call it a day and, <laughs> and see what we can work out. <laughs> yeah. That's a good, I mean, that's a good place to start is you got to at least want to be around each other or want to work toward the same kind of goal. I mean, so we have another man. Uh, it looks like, yeah, he's on here right now that, well, two other men at least that I can see right this moment, Clayton, that their wife has wanted to open the relationship. Right. And so he's confused within, he knows his values, but he's not sure if he should try to chameleon to use, use your word or almost free or open or change his values based off of what she's saying that she wants. So I know that you're one man with one situation, but in, in your opinion, Clayton, in your opinion, what uh, did, she, would you change yourself that way? Would you open yourself that way? How would, how would another man know if that's something that he's okay with is opening the relationship prior to maybe making giant mistakes around it, would you say there's a way he can kind of touch him to himself to answer that question or to start down that path? I, I would caution anyone learned from the polyamorous community is that that is a very standard uh, appeal and people aren't happy. And one of the biggest thing polyamorous people uh, we discuss is um, that you're, you're coming into polyamory from a place or opening your relationship from a place where you're, that's what you both want. And that's what you're both looking for. And to pressure anyone into being in an open relationship, um, you, can, you can do that respectfully without both people needing to open the relationship. Like you can still have a closed relationship on one end and respecting your partner enough that, and trusting them enough that they can go out and do their own thing. But that's usually not what's going on. And polyamory ended up being disguised and open relationship being disguised for people to, to deal with the fact that they're unhappy in a relationship. So, I mean, my advice to anyone whose partner comes to them and says, look, I want to open my relationship is discovering why they want to open the relationship in the first place. Because a lot of the time it comes from a place of unhappiness or insecurity or they just want more. And opening your relationship doesn't provide that more um, that you usually are looking for and addressing that before you open the relationship is probably where you want to go first. Yeah. I, I have a feeling that Cynthia may have a first, first of all, I love that. That's phenomenal advice. Clayton this is if someone wants to open things up, discover why first, what, what unha unhappinesses are there first or what's going on? Why in the first place? 
Right, I love that. It was also interesting that you said that you can have closed on one side and open on the other, but not if it's from the place of just unhappiness, right? And so, Cynthia, I'd love, do you have any questions for Clayton or what, what are you feeling right now that you want to honor within him? Too? Oh, well, I, Clayton, I really appreciate you. Thank you for being here and thank you for the journey that you've been on. I, I loved what you said that you, you re recognize that you want to be with people who like you and that you like in return. And I'm wondering in the poly and I'm not gonna be able to say it, poly, <laughs> poly animorous community, what are some of the things that you hear like women saying that, that that was their unhappiness. So they were trying to fix their relationship in that way. Um, couples that I meet in polyamory um, it usually comes from the women asking that they can open up and that's why I would caution it off the bat is I think that there is I think on the feminine side of the equation there is a need to discover relationships that are more whole and polyamory offers strength to both people and that is to be yourself and I think that's what a lot of it's a very appealing to the female side of the equation is that there is this push that you can't be yourself coming from society and then there is a place that is controlling or forcing you to be, or pressuring you to be someone you're not um, and polyamory kind of is enticing for that reason a lot of the time i hear anyways and it happened to me too was that um there is an unhappiness that needed to be addressed there is feelings of control just an ability to even go out and do your own thing and that that lifestyle encourages that i think is appealing so thank you i was i was curious you know you as a man on the outside what you've heard women say is you know the thing they were trying to fix through having oh, okay multiple partners and and one thing i i heard you talk about oh you know they feel in in the culture, they can't be free to be themselves, so they they feel like in this community they can. Do you also see women kind of filling in maybe holes in them, their own uh, confidence by, you know, if I have multiple people in my life, I'm always having someone kind of fill up my bucket and my confidence and feeling of attractiveness? I think everybody wants to feel loved. I think that's a pretty standard um, feeling in general. And one of the things that polyamory discusses on a regular basis, if you talk to your com uh, community about it, is that with different partners, you have different needs met. And so um, right off the bat, when a couple comes into polyamory, um, there's this fear from the community that they're trying to pick up another woman for their relationship or and there's a concern of someone being used or not being appreciated because that's possibly the dynamic they're already in um i i, I from women is that the needs met and so they're looking for additional relationships in order to have those needs met or their their needs addressed or their desires addressed in some cases yeah. and in some of those cases i would agree that opening up your relationship can be beneficial. I mean, I don't disagree with polyamory after I left my, left my relationship. I only learned about polyamory because of my relationship. I was monogamous through and through. There are some very interesting aspects to having multiple partners um, and respecting that about each other that I've decided that work for me and that allow me to have my needs met because I am very needy in a lot of ways. I do want a lot of love. And I think that a lot of, I don't think that's any different with women ex other than the fact that they're less, um, cap not capable. They're not in a position where they're able to voice that a lot of the time, because, uh, I, I know in my relationship, a lot of fear came out of me and it came out uh, where I would raise my voice. And I thought I was just expressing pain, but by raising my voice, my partner was, was intimidated or scared or say so she didn't bring her concerns to me, wasn't able to talk to me about um, the things that she did need and would just push them aside. And I, I, I hear that's common uh, when, I, when I listen to other people speak in, in these communities. Oh, thank you for sharing that. And you said, one thing you said was like, I, you all owned, you're like, hey, I've got 
a lot of needs here and I, I appreciate there being a lot of people around me. I that makes me remember being in my my early thirties going, you know what, I feel like I'm just too much. And I kept getting feedback from partners that I I was I needed too much to share too much emotion. I wanted to go too deep and it was just like maybe I'm just a woman where I'm my energy's too big, too watery for for one gentleman and maybe that's maybe that is life. Like I need to like siphon and partial myself off so that I I never overload anyone else. One of the things I've learned through um great guys or good guys to great men is the fact that um there are other people to share those emotional connections with and I was terrified personally to, to spend time with guys. Uh, I went to a reform school and guys were a threat to me most of the time. So um, I got into youth work out of high school and I, spot, I spent, I was in a class with myself, a, a gay man and 73 women. And so it became this, I would go to women to learn how to deal with all my emotions. And I was a very emotional man. So I always had all these women in my life, not realizing that I really needed a masculine backdrop and echo chamber in order to kind of level up to to deal with a lot of the emotions that I was having and not dealing with them on a feminine level but dealing with them on masculine level so having friends even um is easier if your relationship's open because there's not this jealousy and threat that's kind of in the background it's an acceptable experience to be with another man or another woman and be a spending time with them because that's the norm in an open relationship versus it being the exception in a monogamous relationship. Um, wow, Clayton, that's, that's huge. First of all, thank you so much. Uh, I, <laughs> so my degree was in food science and nutrition and I went to school with all women. It was like nurses and other things like this. And I had to keep up relationships with men after work, afterwards as well. When we get into family and, our career, you know, we don't keep up our male friendships as well. And so this is, so thank you for that. I can completely relate to that. And I'm an emotional guy as well. So learning how, and I believe that's what we attract here, Clayton, like you, like me in good guys to great men or in great men move mountains. We have guys that want relationship. They want deep connection. They want passion and intimacy, but they don't know. <laughs> they don't understand the skills like you and I are learning. Like I've learned of how to be that masculine man and be able to connect on an emotional level right i think society in general is craving men to do that too because like i'll just post about emotions and about uh emotional uh intellectual uh sorry what's the word i'm looking for um and do it in a safe way around other people um and emotional maturity people crave that so much that they'll write me and say, oh, I, I've been looking for someone who mo was emotionally mature for a long time. Do you want to talk? And I'm like, I don't think you understand. The reason I post this stuff is <laughs> I'm learning about it myself right now. And yeah. so people will latch on to this idea that you actually are capable of that. Everybody's hoping that somebody else beside them is stronger instead of trying to lean on each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know what you mean. So even even though you're searching, other men are reaching out to you because they're searching as well. So we're hungry to talk with someone or those you know, on the path to emotional maturity, right? And that's this is a confusing thing for us as men, as we've we've been told we need to be you know emotional and connecting and feminine, but then we've lost our masculinity along the way. So this work is how to be strong in both of those areas. And know when, when to bring those to the table. It sounds like that's what you're saying, Clayton. It is. And I think the other important part is, too, is when we talk about forgiving ourselves and not dwelling in the past, I think one of the bigger issues to really consider is when we start to along a journey or try to express ourselves emotionally, um, that might be what everybody wants. But they need to understand, too, and we need to understand that we're not going to do it perfectly right from the get-go and it's going to burn us left right and center and we have to deal with that as well yeah yeah thank you clean i love it. i'm gonna press pause on you for a moment bud so i'm gonna press pause thank you for coming on dude that was phenomenal enlightening i agree with everything that you said and it's also very enlightening about uh you know we had someone in the chat talk about and i this came up for me as well whenever i 
including up till today. Cynthia and I talk about a woman cheating, for instance, or a woman sleeping with another man outside of the relationship, if that wasn't the plan in the first place, right? If it's been monogamous and then she either cheats or wants to open the relationship, it's a fucking attack to our identity and our, uh, our, the belief about ourself and our identity within relationship as a family as well, or within a, a partnership as well. It's an absolute like visceral existential attack to us as a man and our grounding in the world. Right. And so I, I love what Clayton said about uh, how women often feel that they can't open up because the man shares anger and she feels intimidated by that, which makes sense. And this is like, the most visceral gut blow to a man that he can almost possibly imagine outside of something with his children happening, right? In his relationship, this is a huge blow to his own confidence in himself and he doesn't know what's wrong. And of course there's, you know, there's layers and layers and layers under that of it's not whose fault it is, but we don't understand how to have those modern relationships. So yeah, what are some final words that you have, if you would please on, what did you really find enlightening about what Clayton was saying, please? Well, I appreciated, Clayton, how you said, you know, you post, um, you post on forums with men and there is a hunger there for there to be conversations about emotions and feelings and shared experience and and, you know, I love your humanness and saying, like, I just, I'm learning this myself. Um, I appreciate you bringing the emotionality to the table in such a um, centered and calm way. And um, I, I also appreciated that you, you did share that, you know, what tends to kind of make women shut down in response. Um, there is this tribe of men here in front of me who I think really work at knowing themselves and inviting all people in their life to share openly with them. And so I'm, I'm excited to be here for that, to be a part of that. Yeah, thank you. So I'll add on to that. I agree. We want people in our life to share with us. So those of you like me that have like an anger response or a what the fuck response when something like this is shared, okay, the best thing that you can do is to feel that physiological response. So this is emotional confidence, guys. You feel the physiological response. So for me, it's energy shoots up my neck, the back of my head gets really tight, and I have start to have tunnel vision and I can just feel my face get tight. And then my, I do the kind of like, what the fuck face? Like everything scrunches down. I put my finger, you know, everything scrunches down. Like what the fuck? So when you're aware of your face scrunching, of you locking eyes, like you're on prey or energy shooting up the back of your neck, guys, whatever physiologically happens for you, that will repeat itself as you're becoming escalated within that emotion. So for me, for anger or something like this, like me being feeling violated, my, my uh, values or my ethics or my integrity in the relationship, you know, that same process happens for me every single time. And that's good that it's consistent because I can become aware of that. And so I can either be aware of that right afterwards, like, oh yeah, that's what that was. Or I can be aware immediately after, like, I'm so angry. Oh yeah, by the way, that's what happened. And you get better and better at recognizing when it's happening, okay? And it's a, it's a practice that you must have and be aware of so that you can disengage. My process is to dis, disengage my eyes. Okay, I've thought a lot about this and I do this. I literally do this and you could, could attest to this. I disengage my eyes because I don't want the prey feeling. I don't want her to feel like I'm going to go in for the kill here, which I did. I made these mistakes for a long time, okay? So I disengage my eyes. I try to, I push my belly out and try to breathe. And then I ask for a break in conversation if it's possible. I've had this happen in the middle of a parent conference with teachers and principals with my son where I couldn't just walk away. So what I did was I broke eye contact and I just breathed and didn't say a damn word for probably a full minute until I could bring my frontal lobe back online. I just like disengaged and breathed. 
I wasn't ignoring them, but I knew that if I tried to have any kind of conversation, it would completely come, it would completely come off the way that I didn't want. And these were two women in this parent-teacher conference and, parent, and uh, principal conference. I certainly didn't want them to feel attacked, and I wouldn't want my, you know, I wouldn't want you, Cynthia, to feel attacked. So I do this process to cut it off at the pass, so to speak. So that's a long, that's a long-winded way of explaining what the process is for me. That's how I teach men in one-on-one coaching. You will have a physiological response. You want to break away from the eye contact, breathe, and go out of that space if you can. Go to the bathroom. Go splash water in your face. Go for a walk for 30 minutes or two hours or whatever you have to do that you're able to do. You know, maybe it's a full day before you pick up the conversation again. So if this, if this kind of shit is triggering for you, that's okay. That's normal. Anger, resentment, fear, those are normal things. That's not good or bad. That's just what you're experiencing. So honor that in your way. Go deal with it on a walk or go lift weights or contact another man in the tribe. Post in private uh, chat to another man here or on our Facebook group, right? This is normal stuff. It will start to become more and more automatic over time. But don't shame yourself for it, guys. Like, oh, I should never get angry. That's not true. It's, but you can handle it in a mature way. What you should never do is dump that on someone else. Because like we just heard in our episode today, and like Cynthia is sharing, and like other women share, then they feel closed down, even though the anger may not be actually at them. You just may be being triggered by a whole shitload of stuff that you need to deal with yourself. So give, give us some feedback, please, on that of even if I'm angry, then the woman, like you said in the show before, feels like it's her fault, mm-hmm. like regardless, right? So give us some feedback on that, please. Yeah, there's, if I'm, if I am, you know, worried that a man in my life is angry, there is an immediate thought of you know, I must have done something wrong or I, it kind of taps into a feeling of inadequacy. Um, and I, and I, I feel even in my own self, there, there can be like two ways that she responds to that. And that can be a, a cut collapse in, or like a wanting to bite back. And I, I loved what you said about, you know, shifting the eye contact. Cause I think so much, of the biological responses. It's not anything to do with reality. It's just kind of the way that we're wired. And um, I totally believe in, you know, we learn things, we learn skills, we have spiritual confidence, emotional confidence, and we have this real, you know, biological stuff that still pulls us. And it's not bad or wrong. It's just kind of understanding when those horses start running through our systems and in between two people. Yeah, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. That's fantastic. So that's a great segue to close our show. A segue is next week, our topic is going to be the red pill. We're going to talk about that next week. There was a post in the forum that already got some uh, excited responses about the topic of red pill. If you guys don't know what that is, maybe search it over the weekend. Uh, otherwise, we're going to talk about it on the show next week. And <laughs> that's going to be an interesting week. It's going to be awesome because we believe in relationship. We love women. We also recognize the caveman and cave, cave woman stuff within us, yeah. like Alison Armstrong talks about, like evolutionary biology talks about, right? And we bring in modern skills of modern relationship that have only been around. Modern relationship has only been around for 60 years or so. And we've been in relationships for, we've been homo sapiens for 200,000 years (laughs) and we've only got 50 or 60 years under our belt of modern relationship and only maybe one decade of what the relationships that we live in now with social media and all the knowledge that we have and all the expectations that we have nowadays. So next week is the red pill. It's on our MN, please. Thank you. And and Clayton, I appreciate your last comment where you said hiding your anger creates a situation where you lose control of that anger. So thank you for that. And thank you for your story and Rob for sharing earlier. And it is wonderful to see you on this Friday. And I am absolutely looking forward to next week. Yeah, me as well. Clayton, thank you so much. Appreciate it. This has been the C-Note Show brought to you by Great Men Move Mountains and greatmenmovemountains.com. 
If you're not yet a part of our private Facebook group, it's free, but you have to be personally invited. So go to greatmenmovemountains.com slash Facebook and punch in your information. If you want to know about our, we have free stuff on our website. There's a free 45 minute audio book, a free 10 day program of how to solve the number one cause of divorce. And that digs into fear. Those are totally new. You've never seen anything like that. Cynthia and I created those on our own, completely different kind of stuff. Check that out. Or if you want to know about our one-on-one -on -one coaching, go to greatmenmovemountains.com slash contact. We will see you on Monday at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. Mountain on Monday. Bye. I'm a thinking about a woman who's cold as tundra with some frozen eyes. I can tell by the way she moves that she cares and it's lovely too.